Hello again. I've been watching with interest the measures taken recently in Europe to combat the spread of COVID. There seems to be great concern about the new variant, which, uh, as far as people can see, has its origin in South Africa. In Austria, vaccination is now compulsory, while in Germany, those who refuse to be vaccinated will be denied access to shops and other facilities. The measures taken in this country don't go that far yet, but they certainly have increased since the identification of the Omicron variety. Almost two years after the beginning of the epidemic, the measures taken to control it are growing even more stringent in Britain and across Europe. I have no doubt that all such precautions are wise and good, but confess myself a little puzzled about one aspect of the matter. This is the new variant, which has been named Omicron after the letter of the Greek alphabet. According to the European Centre for Disease Prevention, there have been no severe illnesses or deaths resulting from this variant of the virus. The World Health Organization says that there is currently no information to suggest that symptoms associated with Omicron are different from those from other variants. Initial reported infections were among university students, younger individuals who tend to have more mild disease, but understanding the level of severity of the Omicron variant will take days to several weeks. I give links in the description to this video to um, what the World Health Organization and the European Centre for Disease Prevention are saying about this. Now, as far as I can understand, this means that the new variant may, at worst, be as likely to cause serious illness or death as other variants of the COVID virus, but this is not certain. Because so far, nobody has been severely ill from Omicron or indeed died from its effects. In short, the World Health Organization and other similar bodies in Europe and elsewhere are working according to the precautionary principle. This means that while there is uncertainty about how dangerous this new variant is, the policy will be to treat it as though it is as deadly as any other variety of COVID. The problem with the precautionary principle is, of course, that it combines in a very bad way with the law of unintended consequences. For example, if the new variation were to give only a mild illness with less chance of death than other forms of COVID, then the best policy might be to ensure that it spread rapidly rather than trying to control its spread. In that way, everybody would get it, have a few days of sniffles and then recover with little disruption to ordinary life. Of course, if it turns out to be more deadly than other variants, this would be a disastrous policy. However, attempting to prevent the new form from entering a country, or when once it is there to try and stop it spreading, will have a raft of other consequences, not all of them desirable. Among these will be an increase in other illnesses and a deterioration of existing health problems. For instance, in Britain, GPs have already said that if they are to deliver many more vaccinations, then they will have to abandon some routine monitoring of heart conditions, high blood pressure and so on. Already it's being suggested that hundreds of thousands of cases of cancer were not detected early last year when people avoided visiting the doctor when first they noticed the symptoms of cancer. Of course, the earlier one treats cancer, the better the prognosis. And this inevitably means that more people in this country are going to die of cancer than is normally the case. In short, whatever decision is taken about restrictions to halt the spread of the new variant, there are bound to be at least some extra deaths. The question is, what option will result in the fewest deaths? The new variants of COVID are going to appear regularly as the virus mutates. If the reaction to each new variant is a swathe of new rules and restrictions, 
then obviously there will be an increase in the number of people who die of cancer, heart disease and other ordinary illnesses. It is a very tricky balancing act.